What's going on, Abide Podcast? It's Jesse here, back with another episode. And today we're going to be just talking about one word. And this one word was on my mind as I was just musing in my thoughts. Musing is another word for meditating. I was just meditating, and this is one of the words I felt like God put on my heart today. So I did a short little study on it, and I wanted to just share some insights about this word. And the word is drum roll, please. I guess that's how you do a drum roll. The word is long suffering. Long suffering. So I want to talk to you today about what it means to be long suffering. So, first of all, the purpose of this podcast is to abide in Christ and to teach others to abide in Christ. Whoops, my mic fell. I hope that didn't hurt your ears. Um, But the word abide means to dwell or to remain or to be at home with. And the purpose of this podcast is to teach you to dwell in close connection with Christ so that you can then teach others to abide in Christ through hearing the gospel, preaching the gospel, and making disciples. So if you don't know what the word abide means, read John 15, and you will see that word over and over again in that passage. Um, And that will help you understand the purpose of this podcast is John chapter 15. So... Today we're going to be talking about this word, long-suffering. Long-suffering. It's a word in the King James Bible. So you're not going to see this word come up as much in the other modern translations because they're going to use words like patience or endurance or steadfastness. But this word, long-suffering, is a powerful word, and I think it describes really what love looks like. So long-suffering Uh, Just the Google definition says this, having or showing patience in spite of troubles, especially those caused by other people. So some synonyms are patient, forbearing, tolerant, uncomplaining, stoical, resigned, easygoing, charitable, accommodating, forgiving, submissive, meek, compliant and mild. Long suffering is enduring pressure. And this is something we need to do in our human relationships, especially. And also when we're going through trials, we need to be long suffering. So when we look at the fruit of the spirit, this is one of the fruits of the spirit in Galatians chapter five. You know, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. So long-suffering is not a work that we produce in our own strength, but it's something the Holy Spirit produces through us. And as we look at long-suffering, the word suffering and long are in that word. So some people describe it as the ability to suffer for a long time. And as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, you are going to suffer many things. Jesus said, in this world, you will have many tribulations, but take heart because I've overcome the world. So suffering is a reality. And we realize how impatient we are when we start complaining, when we start uh, murmuring and saying, and and just we lose our patience, but God wants us to be long suffering. I thought about how long suffering is really what love is. It's a great definition for love because love is hard work. And I think a lot of people, when they think about love, they think of the romantic fairy tale, Disney world type of view of love where everything's just going well and there's no burdens. But the truth is love is an enduring, an enduring thing. First Corinthians 13 is a really powerful passage that talks about love. It Paul's writing this letter to the Corinthians and he says that you can have all of these other spiritual gifts. You can have faith to move mountains, but if you don't have love, it's worth nothing. You can speak with the tongues of men and angels, but if you don't have love, it counts as nothing. You can even give your body to be burned, but if you don't have love, it's worth nothing. And then he describes love. Love is patient. It's long suffering and it's kind. It doesn't envy, it doesn't boast. But one of the things it says, it says this, love endures all things. It bears all things. It believes all things. And love hopes 
all things. I love that. It says that love endures everything. Love endures and bears up under pressure. Love never gives up. Love never fails. And ultimately, this is the love of Christ, that he is enduring our sin. He's enduring us. And he's patient with us. He's patient when we don't follow him, when we walk away, when we turn to the left and the right, and we get enticed by these idols and step away from God. And we trade our cisterns, sorry, we trade the living water for broken cisterns that hold no water. As it says in Jeremiah chapter 2, we, we trade the living water of Christ for sludge mud water of our sin and of our other ways. And, and Christ and God and the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, God as triune, He is long-suffering with us. In the Old Testament, it says that God is patient towards us slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. There's another scripture in 2 Peter. It says that God is not willing that any should perish, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. The reason that Christ has not returned yet is he has a desire. God actually has a desire for all men to come to repentance. And God is not slow to fulfill this promise, but he's long-suffering toward us. He is patient with us. He's patient with our lack of repentance, but he's yearning that we would come to him and repent. And so the reason that we as Christians are called to have long-suffering is because that's the character of God. God himself is long-suffering with us. And if we're supposed to reflect his image and his glory, we need to be long-suffering with others and also long-suffering through life's trials. So with others, but also through life's trials. You see, God's been teaching me this with physical pain. I've been going through some back pain and it's still something I'm walking through. It's not over yet. It's been about a year and a half now and I've seen my flesh just want to get out of it. But God's saying, no, endure through it and trust me, even though you don't understand why, even though you don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing it for a purpose. I'm teaching you, Jesse. I'm teaching you long suffering. I'm teaching you how to suffer for things so that you'll have compassion on others, so that you'll be patient and waiting on me and learning to wait on me, learning to keep on praying, learning not to give up, learning to love people. And that's oftentimes one of the reasons we go through trials is so God would teach us long suffering. Long suffering can't be learned academically. Long suffering Long suffering is something learned experientially. So <clears throat> earlier we talked about how love, people think of love as um, this kind of fairy tale, you know, this uh, infatuation or whatever, um, and, and just light, easygoing happiness. But love is suffering. So think of the word passion. When I think of being passionate about something, that means I'm excited, I'm involved, I'm engaged. But the word passion actually means suffering as well. One of the def definitions for passion is suffering. And I think when we think of passion, we think of excitement, but we don't think of passion as suffering because you only realize that you're passionate about something if you're willing to suffer it. So there's something called the Passion Week. And it's the week that we remember the passion of Christ. There's a movie called The Passion of Christ. And in that movie, it's not Christ's, um, it's not him jumping up and down for joy. It's him suffering through betrayal, crucifixion, death, pain, hurt, false trials, crucifixion, death, and resurrection. That's the passion of Christ is the suffering. It's the passion week, the week of suffering leading to the crucifixion. And the reason we say Christ was passionate was because he was willing to suffer because that's how much he loved us. He was long suffering. He was passionate. And he was so in love with us that he was willing to give up his own body on the tree. And you see, we realize how much we love something when we realize how much we're willing to suffer for something. Those two go hand in hand. Passion and suffering go hand in hand. So we're going to suffer in this life, long suffering, 
First Peter says, after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace will himself restore, strengthen, and establish you in Christ Jesus. I love that verse because a lot of times we think of long suffering as, oh, it's going to take so long. But here's the truth. The Bible says, after you suffered a little while, the God of all grace will himself restore, strengthen, and establish you. First Peter chapter 1 says, you've been grieved, if necessary, by various trials for a short time, for a momentary time. And another scripture says that these light and momentary afflictions are preparing us for the eternal weight of glory beyond comparison. Our life is a vapor. The Bible speaks of long suffering as enduring for a long time, but the Bible also speaks about how quick life is and how long eternity is, where we won't have to suffer. It's long joy, long peace, long excitement to be with Jesus and the glory of God. And so I love that. We do need to have long suffering, but we don't need to have it for too long because one day, if you believe in the Son, Jesus Christ, you will be with him in paradise in heaven where there is no more suffering. So these are just some questions um, I wrote down. Before I uh, ask those questions, one more note little side note. God is a God who delivers. God is a God who does miracles. God can turn five loaves and two fish into feeding 5,000. He can shut the mouths of lions. He can walk on water. He can part the Red Sea. He can do things and take you out of situations when you pray for them. He can deliver you. That's what deliverance means. He can rescue you. But sometimes when we pray, God doesn't deliver us in the way we're expecting. But sometimes when we pray and ask God for help, what God does is he shows us his presence and he teaches us long suffering. He teaches us that we can endure this through Christ who strengthens us. That's what the Bible says when it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In context, that verse is saying, I can endure any circumstance. I can endure being brought up to the highest places or push down to the lowest places. I can abound with much and I can have nothing. And either way, I can endure all things through Christ who strengthens me. Any circumstance, any trial, any storm I walk through, I can endure it because of Christ. And so sometimes God will deliver, but other times he's trying to teach us long suffering and he's not going to take away the thorn in the flesh. As Paul pleaded with the Lord three times, take away this thorn, take away this pain. And God said, no, I'm not going to take it away, but my grace is sufficient for you. And my power is made perfect in your weakness. I'm enough. And Paul says, then I'm going to boast more gladly of my weakness because when I'm weak, he's strong. And so man, long suffering is such a virtuous thing to have. It's such a fruit of the spirit. It's something we need to pursue. And it's something we need to be aware of the areas of our lives where we're not long suffering to others and ask God, say, Lord, work in me long suffering, work in me patience, work in me endurance, because endurance is necessary for the gospel. He who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Don't look back. But look forward, long suffer. So, questions to ask, application to your lives. What suffering right now is God teaching you to just endure through? Identify what specific thing are you are you suffering with that you need to just be encouraged to endure in. Also, question number two: Are there people who bother you who you get impatient with? Are there people who bother you that you get impatient with? If that is, if there are people, one of the reasons is, is because God's putting them in your lives to teach you how to be patient. So what I want to challenge you to do is change your perspective on them as being problem people, but seeing those people that frustrate you as opportunities to make you more like Christ. Okay. How can you know God more? Question number three, how can you know God more who is patient with you so that you can be patient with others? What steps can you take to know God more? 
and God's character, God's patience with you so that you can be long-suffering and patient towards others. All right, three questions to think about. God loves you. God bless you. Thank you for listening.